Hey everyone, this is Michelle over here at Boon Babe, and today I'm going to be telling you all you need to know about farming contracts, plus showing you how I do mine to make sure that they are as efficient as possible. Before I get started, if you already know about farming contracts in general, then you can use the timestamps in the video description to skip ahead and find my personal strats to maximize efficiency. Farming contracts are a great way to get tons more seeds and therefore make more gold and get more farming XP. Basically, what they boil down to is your player is contracted to grow specific plants for the farming guildmaster and you are rewarded seed packs for your hard work after these plants have grown. So in order to start working on farming contracts, you first must have access to the farming guild. This requires you to be on a member's account in world, have a minimum farming level of 45, and have at least 60% Hasidious favor. To start your first contract, head to Guildmaster Jane, located next to the entrance of the Farming Guild, and ask her for a farming contract. There are actually three different difficulty types with their own level requirement. For easy, you have to be at least 45 farming, medium 65, and finally hard requires 85 farming. These levels correlate with the farming levels required to unlock different parts of the Farming Guild. 45 to have access to the East Wing, 65 to gain access to the West, and finally 85 to unlock the North section. Of course, the harder the contract, the more reward for you, so I'd recommend doing the highest possible option you have access to. Looking at the list of possible contracts per level can be a little intimidating and make it hard to make educated guesses as to what's going to grow next. Like for example, there are 31 different things that can be assigned on easy contracts. But if you look closer, some of these assignments aren't even unlocked until you're level 65 or 85 farming. Another reason to do the highest possible contract you can. When calculating rewards from farming contracts, it gets a little bit more complicated. So as well as having the different difficulty groups, these groups are further broken down by tiers. And it's actually these tiers that dictate how valuable your seed packs are. Easy contracts have tiers one through three, medium two through four, and hard three through five. Some examples could be growing onions for a tier one easy contract, corn for a tier three medium contract, or a yew tree for a tier five hard contract. It is important to keep in mind though, that it's not just the plant that decides the tier of the seed pack you're rewarded, but the contract level as well. Yew tree may reward a five tier seed pack when doing a hard contract, but when you're assigned it in a medium contract, it's only worth a four tier seed pack. The higher the tier, the more rolls you have on the seed reward table. With the highest tier, 5, giving 1-3 to three rolls for high rewards and a total of 10 rolls per seed pack. This ends up giving tier 5 seed packs an average value of 68,000 gold per contract completed. The best way to quickly finish farming contracts and sometimes finish several in one go is to pre-plant. Using this method, I have finished 6, maybe even 7 contracts back to back. The lower the farming contract level, the harder it is to predict what will grow next. The contracts scale in the amounts of possibilities that you could be assigned, with over 30 easy plants, while max is 18 plants for hard contracts. But it's important to keep in mind that this includes a lot of overlap, and you don't have to worry about being assigned plants you don't have the farming level for yet. Contracts are based on your own individual farming levels and what areas you have access to. So you won't, for example, be assigned a fruit tree when you're only level 65. Another thing we know is that you will never be given the same contract twice in a row. So that could help narrow it down, but in general, you'll be planting depending on your main goal, either being saving money or getting XP faster. Starting out with easy contracts. So one thing that is guaranteed for easy contracts, you should always keep cactus planted as it's the only plant for this patch that you can be assigned in easy contracts. If you're looking to save money or even make a profit, you can plant as follows. In the allotment, plant potatoes and cabbages, red berries in the bush plot, marigold in the flower space. If gold isn't your main concern and you're focused more on better XP, then you should plant strawberries and tomatoes in the allotment, Jenga berry bushes, and limpwort as your flower of choice. As you level up and unlock medium contracts, there are slightly less options for you to be contracted, but it's still a little tricky to guess what your next contract will be. Just like easy contracts, medium only have one plant that you should always have pre-planted, and this is the white lily, as it's the only flower you can get assigned for medium contracts. For saving time or making profit on medium contracts, you could plant watermelons and strawberries in the allotment, grow jangerberry bushes, plant a regular cactus in the cactus patch, ear it in the herb patch, and plant maple trees. 
Be looking instead to get better XP. For allotments, you can instead focus on watermelon and snape grass, poison ivy bushes, potato cactus, lantidimes. And for trees, either magic tree if you are level 75 or above, but if not, plant the yew tree. By far the easiest to pre-plan for is hard contracts because they don't have nearly as many options for what you're going to be assigned. Some plants that you should keep planted at all times include celastrus tree, potato cactus, snape grass, watermelon, and white lily, as well as redwood tree once you have reached level 90 farming. These are the only possible plants that will grow in these plots for hard contracts. For the rest of the patches, some educated guesses are needed. Poison Ivy should actually be your first choice for both saving or making money and XP gains, as it gives better XP and you don't have to pay to protect it, so you save money and don't risk it dying if you forego the protection. For saving money with other patches, always keep the palm tree planted over the dragon fruit and plant the maple over the other tree options. Herbs in general are a little bit more risky as there are five different options, but to make the most profit, your best bet is planting catatine. For the better XP, again, keep poison and ivy planted if possible. For fruit trees, plant the dragon fruit and regular tree, plant the magic tree. Like I said, again, herbs are a little bit harder to predict, but torsal seed is your best chance at gaining more XP in the herb patch. If you don't have access to the seeds you're contracted to plant, perhaps because you're iron, you can always ask for an easier contract, but this will make it significantly harder to predict what plants you have to grow if you've reached level 65 and 85. Just as an extra tip, you should remember as you go checking your plants, if they have a check health option, that is all you need to do to finish the contract. You do not need to harvest it completely. If you're uncertain, be sure to look at your in-game message and it will tell you when you have completed your contract. You should also wait to plant anything new until you've reached a contract you don't have ready yet, just to guarantee all of your pre-plants are in order. And only ever check on redwoods when you are contracted to do so since they take days to grow. What your current contract is should also be taken into consideration before pre-planting again. For example, if you are assigned to grow some herbs, you may want to wait to check on your pre-planted tree patch as the herb patches only take about an hour and a half to grow, meanwhile trees can take several hours. If you're looking to speed up your grow times and you have Hispori unlocked, I'd also recommend using the Chrono seed that Hispori drops in the anima patch next to the herb one, as this seed gives your plot a chance to skip a growing phase, which is significant when trying to farm farming contracts. If you use Runelight, there's also a plugin called Time Tracking to keep track of how long your plants will take to grow, and I would highly recommend using this. It may not always be the most accurate when using Chrono seed, but it can save you a lot of time running back and forth to see if your plant has grown yet. When you're in the farming guild, you can also select in the options to show your farming contract info box. If you happen upon a spirit seed in your seed pack, but you already have all yours planted, or for whatever reason you don't want to hold on to it, you can turn these seeds or their sapling version into Guildmaster Jane and she'll give you a tier 5 seed pack in return. The best is when you get another spirit seed in the pack and get a second pack back to back, whose seeds you can deposit in the handy dandy seed vault. That is going to be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you also enjoy doing farming contracts and if this helped you at all. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. You can also catch me live on Twitch five days a week at twitch.tv slash boonbabe and every Thursday on the OSRS podcast I co-host, also called Boonbabe, which can be found on this channel or wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.